Hello again everyone. I'm uh, I'm back in Grain today, which is in Kent, and I'm joined by Liam and Chris from Beyond the Point TV. And we're going to be doing like a little collaboration. They want to explore Grain Tower, which is somewhere behind us. It's low tide at the moment, which is good. And we're also going to be exploring the dummy battery here, which is just over that way, and the Grain Landfall Tunnels, which is going that way. We'll search for those. So going to check out the tower first they've not been here before I'm probably going to do a little ration pack review while I'm up there and then when we come back we'll explore the other two features here of this amazing landscape as I say I went here a while back now with Andy from Kent Survival and we did a wild camp up there it was absolutely brilliant but you've got to be careful of the tide and stuff here we've got a bit of time today so it's all right the weather's lovely sunny Saturday so yeah, without further ado, let's get exploring. Grain Tower is a mid 19th century gun tower situated offshore just east of Grain, Kent, standing in the mouth of the River Medway. It was built along the same lines as the Martello Towers that were constructed along the British and Irish coastlines in the early 19th century and is the last built example of a gun tower of this type. It owed its existence to the need to protect the important dockyards at Sheerness and Chatham from a perceived French naval threat during a period of tension in the 1850s. Rapid improvements to artillery technology in the mid 19th century meant that the tower was effectively obsolete as soon as it had been completed. A proposal to turn it into a casemated fort was dropped for being too expensive. By the end of the 19th century the tower had gained a new significance as a defence against raids by fast torpedo boats. It was used in both the First and Second World Wars when its fabric was substantially altered to support new quick firing guns. It was decommissioned in 1956 and remains derelict today. At the time of the tower's construction there were widespread fears that the imperial rivalry between Britain and France could result in a French invasion or naval incursion along the River Thames. The Thames was seen as particularly vulnerable, as well as being one of the UK's most important trade routes, it possessed several naval installations of great importance, including the Victualling Yards at Deptford, the Armament Works of Woolwich Arsenal, the Shipbuilding Yards at North Woolwich and the Magazines at Purfleet. The Medway also had major installations, notably the Chatham Dockyard, which had been targeted to devastating effect by the Dutch during the Second Anglo-Dutch War in 1667. It was thus deemed essential to prevent an enemy entering the Medway and reaching the Dockyard. As you can see we've made it out along the causeway here, probably just under a mile. Um, basically we're in the middle of, uh, of the river here, uh, the River Medway, where it meets the Thames and the North Sea. You've got the Isle of Grain and Sheerness over there, uh, which has got like Garrison Point Fort. And then so if we look over here, we've got sort of towards like the Thames and Essex, um, sort of in the rest of Kent around there. Of course Grain is behind us in front of, sorry, in front of me, and of course this is Grain Tower, so um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the little bits of history about it and stuff, so yeah, you sort of got like a Martello Tower, the circular bit, so that's like Napoleonic, and then of course they've added on World War II bits and stuff when it was called into use again to defend the country, and this important area of the country, you know, with like Dockyards and stuff like that, Chatham, you know, Rochester, there's Gillingham, sort of really important areas, and of course the Thames, you know, guard the Thames estuary as well. Um, we 
think there's a, a World War One part as well. So we've got potentially three uh, three eras of history represented here by this. It's an incredibly unique structure, and there's not that many of these really in existence. I mean, there's plenty of Martello towers, but not with all of these add-ons and stuff. So we're going to get a few shots and stuff, and have a little look around the outside and stuff like that. We've got more time today because we know the tide time so that's really good um, I'm gonna climb up the rickety ladder now <laughs> and have a look inside I'll find somewhere comfy and we'll crack open the ration pack I'll show you what one it is when we're inside construction began in 1848 but difficulties were soon encountered in laying the foundations and construction paused until 1853 it took nearly two years for the Lincolnshire builders Kirk and Parry to construct the rest of the tower. It was completed in late 1855 and was handed over to the Ordnance Authorities on the 17th of November that year. By this point it had gone more than 50% over budget, costing £16,798. In today's money that would be one million four hundred and seventy thousand. £640. The tower stands three storeys high, faced in granite ashlar and is roughly oval in shape. The gun crews lived in barrack accommodation within the tower, which also housed stores and ammunition. Its overall design is similar to that of a Martello Tower, dozens of which were built around the coasts of Britain and Ireland during the Napoleonic Wars at the start of the 19th century. It can be considered the last Martello Tower to be built in Britain. Well, made it up the ladder as you saw and into the, the, the tower itself. Climbed up the staircase, I basically followed the same route as I took when me and Andy came here to Wild Camp. And I'm back at the spot I was at where I slept up on the gun emplacement here. So this bit is World War II I believe. You've got the giant gun pit here and then you've got this little bit undercover here and there's like ammunition stores dotted around excuse any sort of wind noises as of course you can see there's like the Medway the Thames and the North Sea sort of below us and stuff so it's a bit windy it's quite open there's another gun pit over here and then you can just sort of see yeah, sort of the bit around the gun pit where the gun would have rotated. So, I'm probably going to set up here, crack out my ration pack, and we'll get eating. So this is the ration pack in question. It's a Canadian IMP, menu number five. It's from the breakfast range. This one is breakfast patties. And I'll show you what's inside. It's all very neatly packed. Clearly got dessert here. So. tray as well. Lug that here with me as well. And yep, that's everything in the bag. You've got these nice foil um, lined paper bags. Really, really cool design. Um, for cooking today I've got my Vargo titanium hexagon wood stove, some solid fuel tablets, we've got some pots and I've got a flames ration heater or FRH with me because these don't actually come with FRHs in them. So, what have we got? We have the main, which is breakfast patties, of course. So that'll be in a box, and I think that's going to be in a pouch. Let's have a look. And yep, yeah, looks like you get one, maybe two in there. Baxter's, the dessert, which is sliced pears. See what that's like. So I'm guessing that is going to be in its own silver pouch as well yeah another Baxter's one a vanilla protein drink mix little beverage bag for mixing stuff in and it's got a gusset bottom as well to it so that'll be for the, the sports drink which is lemon and lime hamburger bun so that's for the patties obviously maple and brown sugar oatmeal excellent so it's a big breakfast this Big sachet of Nescafe, probably three in one, sweet and creamy coffee. 
Um, I'll probably try it on its own, but I've got some hot chocolate with me. I'll try and make a mocha, because of course I'm not a massive fan of coffee. This I'm even less a fan of, mustard. Um, although Candy said, give it a try. She was cracking up when I told her about it. So, might try a little bit, but I'm not a fan really. We've got some ketchup, good. Four little Tic Tacs in a small bag for after you've eaten. A small paper book of matches. Nice. Probably keep those in my cooking kits rather than use them. I've got stormproof matches and lighters with me. Wet napkin, moist towel, it, wet wipe, whatever you want to call it. Pretty strong tissue serviette paper and quite a long but flimsy spoon. Enough yakking, let's get snacking. Right, first, first thing I think we're going to do is start mixing up all of our, our drinks. We've got this vanilla protein drink. Um, what I'll do, I'll mix it up in the bag. Fairly strong vanilla smell to it, nothing too strong there. We've got our little fill line there as well. Lemon and lime sports drink. Oh, it's got a very strong smell that one. Pour that in the bag as well. And yeah, there we go. Get quite a bit in there. nice yellow colour to it. And there we go, that's our water boiling up for the Nescafe. I oh, and also I've got to boil some water up for the oatmeal as well. As you can see in the background, I've got myself a little a little treat. Wouldn't it be Tom Outdoors without a cider, would it? So we've got premium cider copperberg light with raspberry so just a light cider in a little tin let's crack it open to a good adventure oh that's yeah, quite nice not overly sweet it's just right i'd give that probably 8.25 out of 10 <laughs> decent oh, i've got the breakfast patties in this uh, hot pack i've just bought a few of these on eBay and let's get our water in up to the fill line out there Back it up. Yeah, yeah got burger going on. Yeah. yeah. The voice it's you can hear in the yes. background, by the way, is Liam from Beyond the Point TV. They've been having a little explore as well. And uh Yeah, we've got we've got some serious food going on here. It looks yeah, good. Looks like it. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at our hamburger bum. So, nothing too fancy looking. Basically, there we go. Just have a little nibble. Yeah, it's not bad for something that's shelf stable. Oh, that's quite hot. Ah, excellent. So you get two in there. Right, let's make some room for this. Oh, I smell really good. It's all the juices. And there we go. And they just slid out. They look decent. A bit orange in colour, which is a bit disturbing. 
what I'm going to do. So yeah, we get two of them, they're quite thin. I think what I'm going to do is probably just whack them in the burger bun. I've got to try the mustard though, haven't I? I'm probably going to try like a little bit on my finger and that's it. At least I can say I've tried mustard, but I'm definitely having the ketchup. So let's, let's get these on here. I think let's just go for... Should we have both? Or should we have like one in there? Let's have one in there and then let's have one on its own so we can test it, yeah? So let's get the ketchup out. A little bit in there. Then I have a little bit. Oh. A little bit on the one that's just on the tray. Very dark red ketchup. <laughs> the mustard. I keep putting it off. I keep putting it off. I'm going to give it a little try. Oh, I hate mustard. Oh, the smell. Oh, oh God, that absolutely stinks. Oh. That's all I'm having. All right, three, two, one. Oh. <coughs> yeah, I've tried it. I won't have it again. Oh, that's horrible. I mean, I'm sure it's really not bad mustard. Oh, it's got an aftertaste as well. Seriously, I'm not a fan of mustard. That's all I'm having, guys, all right? Sorry. Let's uh, try some of this, try and get rid of that horrible taste. Let's try it without the ketchup first. There we go. Well, they're gorgeous. You can tell it's a bit processed sort of thing. and doesn't taste like beef. It tastes more like pork, like um, a hot dog or something. And I've got a little bit with the ketchup there. Try and spread this ketchup out a bit. I've sort of dumped it all on top. We go. Oh, they're nice. They are really good. Mm. All right, let's try. Let's try it like this, yeah. I just like having a burger. That is so nice. Oh, really juicy kind of meat. <laughs> Always sounds dirty. However you, however you put it. Oh, they're lovely. Big thumbs up from me. I'm going to wolf them down now. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to pour this uh, sports drink into my empty Nalgene bottle. Just because these are really difficult to drink out of, I find. Even though they stand up. So, in total you get about, let's see, what about 250ml. Mmm, that's really nice. Um, kind of very subtle sort of flavour if you put any more water on it it'd be quite weak but it's not too sort of sweet and sickly that's a, a good mixture there um, and neither neither the lemon or the lime kind of overpowers one another they just sort of mix together really well they're sort of equal equal measures that's refreshing it's very good so let's crack this open and yeah, it's basically, basically porridge, of course. Oh, it smells really nice. Really nice. So let's have a look at the coffee next. Give that a little stir again. There we go, so it's a three in one Nest Cafe, I think. It's my favourite type of coffee. If I'm gonna drink coffee, that is I'm not a massive coffee fan. Mm, that's quite nice actually. I'll probably just sit and drink that as it is actually. I don't know if I'm gonna be bothered to mix a hot chocolate in with it. I'll just drink it as is. Okay, let's try out this uh, vanilla protein drink. I'm just going to pour it into here just to make it easier to drink. Just had a little look at the tide. The tide's coming in, so we're not going to hang around too long. I'm going to finish this off and uh, get back onto the mainland. I've had enough problem with uh, islands and tides and whatnot for one year already, so... <laughs> Right, it's a very rich kind of velvet sort of vanilla smell that. 
So you don't get a hell of a lot of uh, liquids in it. You're looking at about 250 mil again. So one sachet uh, gives you 18 grams of protein. There you go, that's the stats. The nutritional facts. I'm just boiling the uh, the sliced pears. See what they're like. When I had um, a Canadian IMP when I was in France, um, that was the first Canadian one I'd done. And I remember the, the like the fruit in it. I don't know. It was like a fruit medley or fruit cocktail. It was horrible. But then I think it was because I hadn't cooked it I hadn't boiled it so I'm boiling it this time anyway let's try this protein drink out yeah it's nice it's quite foamy it's mixed really well there's no lumpy bits in it and stuff and yeah it's not too bad it's quite thick um, then you wouldn't want it too watery I don't think oh, I'll probably do that about four or five gulps that so like a busman's holiday for me this is drinking a protein shake all right next thing let's try out the uh, i think it was maple and brown sugar oatmeal still a little bit runny but we'll just have to make do oh that's a funny taste to it that i can't quite place it it's very bland it's not a hell of a lot of taste you could do with being a little bit sweeter i think but it's all right it's uh just tastes like normal normal porridge to me, maybe slightly golden syrupy sort of flavour, but certainly not getting any kind of maple flavour, although I keep thinking that's like apple, but it's it's slightly different, I guess, so <clears throat> it's alright. Yeah, it's not too bad, I could quite happily eat it anyway. So I'm going to do that now, as I say, we're in a bit of a rush now to get off of the tower, as always with this place. Um, it allows you a, a short window of opportunity to, you know, get on have a look and get off unless you wait for the tide to go back out again so but that could be quite a while we'll uh have a look at the other accessories in the in the in the pack so just some basic matches so, see if they work <laughs> and they do always good to know and next we've got our <coughs> our gum. I might have gum or Tic Tac. Sorry. So it just says fresh mint, and there we go. I'll have those in one go. Yep. If you've had Tic Tacs before, you'll know what I'm on about. Minty, refreshing. Feels like it's a palate cleanser after you've eaten. Decent. Let's have a look at the wet wipe. Yeah, that's it opened out. Give ourselves a little a little scrub up. But yeah, I've enjoyed this uh this menu. Um the breakfast patties were really really good. The oatmeal was good, very, very filling. Protein drink was good, the coffee I actually liked. Um excuse me. And we yet to try out these uh sliced Sliced pears, they could be the uh, the deal breaker, we'll see. So I'll eat this and then I think we're going to have to pack up and go. Just keep an eye on that tide down there. Yeah, there we go, you might be able to see them inside. I'm going to try and find a... That's the only spot I've got that's uh, that's not dirty at the moment. There we go. Show, show you there. That's it. The spoon hasn't melted whenever I've put in any hot stuff, so that's quite good. Okay, I'm not a massive fan of pears. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> so let's try this little bit. Oh, they're all right. They're a bit slimy. Um, there's something not right about them. It's because you know they're not completely fresh. That's a bit off-putting. But taste is fine really it's just the the consistency and the texture of them is really really weird um, I'll try one more 
very soft, not chewy. Definitely better, um, like heated up, boiled. Couldn't eat too many more of them. I think they need to go with something, just to eat them like that on their own. It's a little bit rank to me, but. <laughs> um, but no, overall, overall, it's been a, a good little, uh, good little ration pack. This one, so Canadian IMP menu number five from the breakfast range. It's breakfast patties. Been really, really good. Hope you've enjoyed that. We're going to carry on exploring uh, the mainland here at Grain. Going to look at the the landfall tunnels. So that's all underground and stuff. That's going to be interesting. And we're going to have a look at the dummy battery as well which is just opposite the tower here, which is of course out kind of in the middle of the sea or the, the, the river estuary. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to get packed up, get off the tower, get back on the mainland and we'll continue the exploring there. Hope you enjoyed that ration pack. Cheers peeps.